Hi everyone, this is Stacy. I am back again today with another Cricut Explore video. For today's video, we're doing a Make It Now project. I thought we haven't done one in quite some time, so I thought why not do one today? Uh, the one we're making is called Christmas Tree Circles. It is a free project. I will insert a picture here so you can see what that looks like. Alright, now that you have an idea what we're making, let's go over the materials I recommend. Uh, they said to use a piece of wood for a base or a platform that is about 4 by 12. I found this in the shed, just a scrap piece of wood. Mine here is 18 by 3 and a half. Any scrap wood you have is fine. You can even go to the lumber yard and they'll cut you down a piece of wood if you'd like. If you don't want to use wood, another option to use would be a piece of styrofoam. Go to your craft store, use a coupon, you can find styrofoam there pretty inexpensively and that's probably a lot easier to work with. If you are using wood, Go ahead and draw five holes for your tree pieces. Start from, of course, you can just poke through. Now, for the actual tree bases, they recommend uh, five wooden skewers. You can use skewers, you can use dowel rods. I think even branches from outside will be fun to add to this. You can even use pencils. We all have those lying around. Just make sure your hole is large enough for the pencil to fit through that. I'm actually using these bamboo pieces. They were not being used in the shed, so I thought, why not use these? They do also recommend that you cut these down to be six inches in height. I'm going to wait on that until we cut the pieces out. I may want some trees to have a larger trunk showing, and I also want my trees to be scattered and not all be the same height, so I'm going to wait to cut these down. To cut them, if you're going to use wood skewers, they said to use a pair of wire cutters. I do have these here, but they did not cut the bamboo very well. I'm just going to break them and then use uh, my scissors to kind of form them to they'll fit my hole here. All right, other things. Uh, as a hot glue gun and glue sticks. going to plug that in so that's ready to go. And then your cardstock. They want you to use three dark green 12 by 12 cardstock and then two light green 12 by 12 cardstock. I didn't have enough green that I liked. I'm actually changing that out and using the Stampin' Up! Designer Series paper. I'm using three different colors and you can customize this. It's your tree. Anything you like is fine. I chose three. I want my darker one here, this old olive, and to be the center piece here. I have these two here, these uh, pear pizzazz. They're going to go here and here, and then my this color here, Wild Wasabi, will go on each end. Um, so just a different variety of tree color. So any color you have for the cardstock or paper is fine. I think that is it. I right, go ahead and plug in your glue gun. That's ready to go. We'll go to the Cricut and start uh, working on this project. All right, we are now at the computer. Go ahead and go to the Cricut Design Space webpage. And you want to log in the way we always do. Click on that green box in the upper left hand corner. Enter in your email and your password. And then you can verify you're logged in by seeing your name in that green box. Now on this page here is where you want to stay. This is the landing page or where all the Make It Now projects are. And there's quite a few on this page. To narrow the search a little bit, I want to go to All Categories and change that from All Categories and go down to Paper Crafts. All right, we're gonna scroll down until we find the trees we wanna use. You can see there's really some cute ones on here. I do have my glue gun plugged in, so that'll be ready to go when we're done. All right, keep on scrolling, and there they are. Christmas tree circles, and they are free. We wanna go ahead and hit the customize so we can see how they're gonna look and change the colors. All right, now, like I said, they recommend using two pieces of cardstock or two colors, so you can see those there. They have three dark green and two light green. I'm using three different colors of cardstock, so I'm going to go and change these colors. I'm leaving this one the same. That'll be my one single piece of my center tree, and then I'll leave these two the same. They could be another color. I do want to change these two greens here. I'm going to click on this circle here so I can find it in my layer tab. When you have something selected on your mat, it'll highlight in your layer panel as well. So you can find it easier. So I'm going to scroll down until I see where it's highlighted. All right, right there is highlighted. Click on the circle to change the color. I'm going to change that to be this armadillo color. Click on the next one and change the color again. So change all five of those circles. And then one more right here. All right, so now if you look, it looks like I have three different colors, which I do, but I want this one to be the same color as that one. So once again, I'm gonna click on that circle, go to my layer panel, and find out where it's highlighted in my layer panel window. All right, I 
can see it's right here. I'll change that to that same armadillo color, that same purple. And I'm doing this so it makes it easier so I know what paper to insert in the mat. And you can most certainly change these and make each one of these a different color. You can do like a light green and then go down to a darker green and make it like a gradient tree or radiant tree. All right, so now I have three colors. I have one that's one colored cardstock. These two here will be my lighter green or my pear pizzazz. And then these two here will be my other green, which is my wild wasabi. I'm now going to go ahead and go. And we'll see what this looks like on our mat. I have no paper on my mat yet. I want to see what color it asks for first. So I know, that, I know the dark green is my one single color. Alright, it's getting ready to load. Okay, so the first color it's asking for is my dark green, which is going to be my main color for the center tree. Then I have my two purples right here. It does call for five mats. And I have my other two here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and load my dark green up. I'm going to cut these out. And then I'll finish cutting the other ones out and we'll go to the table and start assembling this little centerpiece. Alright, we're at the Cricut. I have my one color, my darker color on my mat. Go ahead and load this in there. I hit go on the software. It's going to load the mat up. And hit the cut button. So each tree is about five circles. I'm going to go ahead and cut this one out first. I'll cut the other ones out off camera, and then we'll go to the table and start assembling it. Alright, two more little circles and we're good to go. All right, that one's done. I'm gonna, like I said, finish cutting the other ones out and I'll meet you at the table. All right, we're now at the table. I have all my circles cut out and scored. That was the next step. You need to take your five circles and score them eight times. So it'd be like a pizza pattern. Um, and this is like a guessing game, really. What I did is I just took them on my mat. Like I can see this is a three inch circle. Take a ruler and your Cricut spatula and just line up one and a half and scored it turned it again to where I had a horizontal line. And then we're going to score it again at one and a half. And then just turn it to where you can see the X. Then just take this and make sure you're going over the X. So think of it like you're cutting a pizza. Okay, so that one there is done. The next one up was three and a half. So I went to one and three quarters. Okay, then scored it that way, turned it where I have my line going this way, scored it again at one and three quarters, roughly, like I'm not being too precise here. Turning it so I can see the X, and score that way, then turn it to the X, and do that way. Okay, so there's two, this is the next size up, this is four, roughly about four, so going your two inch line, and score it, turn it this way. So you're making a plus sign first, then you're gonna see your X and then cross your X's. Okay, so there's three done. Our next size is about four and a quarter. So I went a little bit past two Lining it up a little bit, a little past two. Oh, I'm way off. There's my X right there. Isn't that funny? So you can see they're not perfect, which I think is fine. You know, Christmas trees aren't perfect. They're pretty, but they're not all perfect. All right, the last one we have is about five inches. So I'm going to go about two and a half or so and score it, turn it. Two and a half. I have my X there. Cross the X. And then that one. Okay, that is hard on the arm. Because you're doing 5, 10, 15, you're doing 25 of those. 
you think the machine will cut them or score them for you. All right, so they're all scored. The next step it says to push the wood skewer through the circle layers. So I guess we need to punch a hole in there. All right, they didn't punch the hole in there either. So I'm gonna bring out the big bite and hopefully, and you'll, if you see here where my X face, you probably can't see it, kind of right there. Okay, I'm just gonna punch a hole in that circle. I'm gonna do this to all of your pieces. It just makes you wonder why the machine didn't do this. Now, this is like a little tedious work, you know? All right, so there's those five done. You know, I'm gonna make them easier and take four of the same one, the same size circles, roughly, right? And we're gonna punch a hole. Save a little bit of time. All right, so take your circles. I'm actually just going to punch them in the center because my score lines are off on some of them. So take four of your circles. Just kind of guess where the center is and punch. Okay, that might be the way to go. So if I were to do this again, what I would do first is take all your circles of the same size, punch a hole in the center, and then you go by that center point and do your um, piece of score lines. Okay? All right, we're done with that. Let's set this aside. Now we have, let's go ahead and separate our colors here. Okay. All right, they're all done. All right, now it says to push them through our rod. Let's go ahead and bring this in. Let me zoom you guys out. All right, so I'm gonna work with my old olive, which is my center piece here. And it says starting with the um, smallest to the largest. So what I'm gonna do is to find a dowel rod that's gonna fit here. Okay, hopefully I can find what's gonna fit in there. Okay, that one fits in there nicely. Okay, I'm just gonna, like, I'm, like I said, I'm just testing it now. Once I get my things on there, I will glue. So we're actually going to score on our little fold lines here. Let me take this out of the way. Okay, just score on your little piece of line, your piece of marks there. And what it's going to do is it's going to give your tree a little bit of dimension. Okay, and they're all going to be all kinds of, you know. All right, let's go ahead and put this one on there. Okay, so there's one. Like I said, you may not want to play around with these pieces here on how it's going to fit on that. Let's take the next largest one. Okay, and score. All right, so we have our top piece like that. All right, so if I look at it from the side view, la la, there's our tree. All right, I kind of like it. I think it's a little bit too tall. I'm going to take all these off. Okay, and I'm going to cut this a little bit shorter. And just about an inch or so off. Okay, I cut off nicely. All right, let's take our glue. And I'm going to put a good amount around, let me zoom you guys out. Okay, a good amount around that. I can put it in there. Let me, let me bring it back over here. I have this glass cutting board. I'm going to put that down because I'm going to put some glue inside that hole. Okay, then also around here like that. And I'm going to stick it in there. Cross my fingers that it goes in there straight. Just push down to where it can't go in any farther. Then kind of do a double take. You know, look at it from the side like this. So you can see I'm kind of leaning to the left. All right. I think that's in there now. Okay, see how that's somewhat straight? You don't want your trees to be crooked in the forest. All right, that's in there. 
we're good to go. Now before I glue anything else, I'm setting that aside and take our pieces again. All right, what I wanna do is take some glue and put it on here very carefully because this is paper, it's going to be hot. Okay, I'm just kind of going around the center like that and I'm gonna go up or through. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is kind of pinch this a little bit to where it's gonna hold and grip that paper. Okay, and that's gonna help form it a little bit too, I think. Okay, so when you have one there, like that. Okay, so there's my first part of my tray. So I have a little bit of chunk space showing, which I like. And again, you can always come back in here and reform these guys a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna really not. Once they're glued on there, oh, I tore my tree. We'll fix that with a little bit of glue. Okay, let me take something here and hold that down. I went and tore my paper a little bit. All right, work on the next one. All right, so there's the first tree. All right, minus the glue strings. You could just take a heat tool to that if you want to. I think it's kind of cute. What do you think? All right, I'm gonna continue on to do my other four trees and I'll be back and share with you the finished project. Hey guys, I am back with a quick update so I can share with you an issue I came across. If you recall the directions for the measurements on the wood, they recommended was four inches by 12 inches. My wood is three and a half by 18 inches. So I have six inches more than they recommend us to have. And I still think 18 inches is way too short. In my opinion, you can't fit five trees going across without it looking more like a forest versus a Christmas tree decoration or a centerpiece kind of thing. Uh, we have the five holes they had us use, but I'm actually gonna eliminate those two holes. I did have my dowel rod glued in there and the bottom part of that tree, the largest portion, that largest circle is five inches in diameter. No matter how much you scrunch this up, I think what I found, it hits this tree. You know, it's gonna, it hits that side and I didn't like it. I just thought it looked all clustered. So I'm gonna eliminate the two trees and only have my three. So what we're gonna do is find a dowel rod and we're just gonna continue on here. Hopefully my camera does not die in the process. If, if it does, I'll just pause it and plug you all back in. Right, let me find my skewer or my piece here, my bamboo. And again, I'm gonna just cut this off. I'm gonna go a little bit shorter. Okay, like that. And we're gonna glue this in there. So take your glue. I'm gluing right in the hole there. I found this to be easier. You don't really need to put the glue around the, around the stick. As long as you get some glue in there, you're good. All right, stick that in there. And then again, I'm gonna kind of tilt it towards me so I can make sure my tree is going somewhat straight. All right. All right, so we have that. So I'm no longer working with that color. I'm gonna go back with that darker color, that wabasabi. And again, we're gonna score these pieces just like before. All right, two more to go. My camera is kind of blinking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish this off with these two other pieces and then I'll come, I'm gonna go through my Christmas stuff and come back and uh, we'll jazz this up. All right, so I'll see you guys in a few more minutes. Hey guys, I am back. As you can see, I went and finished up our Christmas tree centerpiece and overall I think it turned out really, really cute. It has that uh, wonkiness going on. It has a fun factor, just really different. A lot of fun to make. Now, if I were to make this again, there would be a few things I would change about it. And I thought I would share that with you guys and also share with you what I did to my bottom to make it look more festive. Uh, first off, I'm gonna give you a side view so you can see just how darling this is. All right, there's my little tree there. Then we have that one there, the center tree. And a tree over there. Really fun, right? Really cute. All right, the first thing I would change would be the amount of trees you use. The instructions said to use five trees on a piece of wood that was four inches wide by 12. My wood here was three and a half by 18, and I think that was too small to fit five trees. So I did change that from five to three. And I think that was a good choice because it left me more room and it gave me more of an open feel. I was going for more of a scenic Christmas scene versus a more forest jungle scene. And that was, like I said, a really good choice. Imagine if you can visualize five trees this size on a 12 inch roller. 
I just couldn't see it happening. I just think it would be way too busy and they'd be too close together and just too cluttered. So I do like the fact I changed that. I would also change your base piece of wood, whether you're using wood or styrofoam, you can change that very easily. They do sell wood that you can get that is one inch thick by six inches wide, whatever length you'd like. I'd go that route. I'd probably go like a one by six by 20. It's a tad bit wider, but it will give you more width this way to where you can make your trees more scattered about or more sporadic so they're not in a row. Then you can add maybe a few more fun elements that you're going to, you know, for more, a few more festive things. So I would definitely go wider and maybe just a tad bit longer for that. All right, now the assembly on it, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd have to give it a 5. Um, that's halfway. I know it's kind of low. I usually give the Explorer a little bit higher rating. But we had to cut out 25 circles, 5 circles for each tree. And then we had to, you know, after cut all them out, not a big deal. We had to hand score each circle four times. That was a lot of scoring. It was very tedious. It wasn't hard. Time consuming and tedious, yes, but it just I just thought it was silly because the Explorer does scoring. I don't know why they didn't have that score. It, it would just make sense that we would score that and cut all the holes out. It was just something I couldn't get over, but not a deal breaker, but again, something to consider there. Other than that, I, I think it's really cute. And like I said, it has that fun, quirky factor going on. Now, what I did down here to make it more festive, if you will, I added batting. This is just regular quilt batting. You can get it at Walmart, Joann's, any fabric store will have it. If you don't want to use batting, you can use felt. You can even use that um, poly felt that you would use for pillows. If I had that, I'd probably go that route. But I just had this on hand, so I used that. Now, what I would change with this is how I put that on, or when I put it on. I put that on after my trees were done. So if, what I would do next time, have your your dowel rod or whatever you're using for the trunk of your tree, the base of your tree, glue that in your wood and have that where you want it. Then you can go in there and take your batting, like this is your batting, kind of like cut X's in it, like a little slice on it, then you can just kind of put that over that versus cutting the slices in it like I had to do here. If you see here, I have these little slice marks where I had to cut in to make it go past that uh, dowel rod or that bamboo stick I used. So I would change that. This is not a deal breaker. I still think this is cute, but it was just a learning experience from what I would change again in order to make this. I thought I'd share that with you guys. I think this is really cute, and it would look really cute on top of a mantle, on a windowsill, against a wall. It's just really, it's like I said, it's just a different little fun element that you can add to your um, Christmas decorating. All right, now, what I did down here as far as my elements, I actually went to my Christmas supplies or my Christmas decorations. I took things off items here and there. I didn't completely destroy or unassemble a current decoration I had. I just took bits and pieces off other things just so I can add a few things here and there. Um, the first thing I added here were little Christmas presents. You can make them very simply. Uh, these are just styrofoam. So if you are using styrofoam for your base, cut a few pieces or a little few rectangles or squares and save those. Wrap them up in paper. Then you can add your own uh, little Christmas presents there as well. I have two. I think that's fine. And I had that under my tree here. Like I have my, my center tree on my base or the trunk is showing a little more defined. I knew I wanted to put something under that. So that's why I made that tree a little bit longer or taller. I have a few ornaments here and I have a few more over there. A little cluster of pine cones here. Pine cones over the cluster of berries. So I go this route or this side. You can see my pine cones there and then my other pine cones there and the other ornaments. I did these things here to hide that seam a little bit. But like I said, this is not a deal breaker. Um, it was just something I would do differently next time. Now, if you can see here on my batting, it is glistening like snow would, would, would do naturally. What I did to get that effect is I just used glitter. I have this uh, jumbo glitter shaker. And what this is like a glitter that's really, really soft. It really is soft and really, really um, flaky. It's not like the, it's not the same size as our normal glitter. Okay, but it's really soft. And all I did for this, I just took it and sprinkled it on my batting. You know, some of it will come off, but majority will stick just by the static alone will make it stick. And like I said, I think that needed it to make it look more like more snow, like more like snow wood as far as having that shininess to it. Okay. Now a lot of that will come off and I will use this next year for decorating or this year for decorating. And I'll just add more glitter when I use it. Um, so you can keep that in mind. But if I were to had normal regular glitter like this here, this is a silver glitter, again, a Walmart brand glitter. But you can see how this is more like sand, a lot more finer. If I would've had that color, I would've went that route. Now you can take this, because I have that white glitter on there, you can take a little bit of the silver glitter and just sprinkle it on like you would be sprinkling your food, like salt and pepper. And it would, again, it would just add that more 
glistening effect. And since this is so fine, as far as the grain, I think it would stick better to that batting versus the glitter I use. So you can keep that in mind as far as the glitter you want to use. And look at me having a glittery, sparkly mess. All right, other things I wanted to add that I did not do were these little pieces here, these little berries. I wonder if them on the top of my tray to add, again, something for the top. When I had that there, it looked more like a cupcake versus a tree. So I completely took that off. I didn't like the idea or the way that looked. So I decided to leave my tree toppers blank. So my trees are topless. Uh, let me share with you what I did though. I did cut my dowel rod or my bamboo stick, leaving about a quarter inch or so exposed, leaving just, you know, it was easy to cut. And like I said, I just left a little bit of that bamboo um, exposed like a normal tree would be. You can go in there and add other things if you want to. You can add uh, enamel dots. These are just homemade enamel dots from Pony Bees. I did I, I did these in the toaster oven or my red oven. I can't forget, I don't remember. But I did have these on there playing around and I didn't like them either. You know, I think in this case, sometimes less is more. So I decided to leave those off. I was really disappointed. I couldn't use my little elf guy because I think he is just the cutest little thing. But he looked funny on this scene because he was real small compared to the size of the tray. So he just wouldn't work there. But and that's it. That's what I used. Like I said, I think it's really fun. You can, of course, go in there with a glitter glue or, you know, whatever, whatever that glue called. It looks like this. This is a stamp version of it. But that kind of glue that looks like this, you can add that to your tree there to add more sparkle there. You can add, um, you know, liquid glass, glossy accents, crystal effects, diamond glaze, you know, something there to make the tree more sparkly, if you will. Uh, but there you have it, guys, the Christmas tree centerpiece. I think it's really, really cute. I had a blast making it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching. I do apologize. The video is probably forever long. I don't fast forward or edit my videos. I want you guys to see everything in its entirety. So if I come across an error, you guys can see how I fixed it or what I did to make it work. Um, so there you have it. A really cute Make It Now Christmas Tree Centerpiece. As always, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.